Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Go ahead and get started with the first school. We have the Royal Danish Academy of Fine Arts. <laughs> And they will be speaking to you about their project, Lookalike. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, we are from the Royal Danish Academy of Fine Arts, uh, the School of, of Design. Uh, and I'm Nicoline. I'm Patrick. I'm Monica. And I'm Yelda. And we have worked with a project about children and technology, which we have explored through a method of participatory design. Okay, we have a problem with the clicker. Doesn't work. It doesn't click? No. No. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much. And <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. So now is the break. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, um, yeah, we can, can do it. <laughs> we can describe it. Improv. 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 <laughs> um, Sorry, we dance. are experiencing technical difficulties. It's yeah. oh, no, no, we're, we're, we're live. We're live. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, children and technology. Um, we're going to talk to you today about Anya, who is a, a daycare teacher in a Danish daycare, and we're going to share with you her greatest fear. But first, we need to talk a little bit about the Danish context. Uh, in Denmark, most young children are in daycare every day. And it's a normal daily occurrence to go on field trips. And the daycare will take the children out into uh, the traffic in the city, and they'll be walking through open nature areas in Denmark. Now, we found that uh, through our conversations with teachers that they experience a lot of stress and worry when they go on field trips because they have to keep track of large groups of children. And so Anya told us that her biggest fear in her professional life is actually to lose a child. The stress that Anya and other teachers like her experience makes them be very strict with the children, and very preoccupied with actually, uh, very preoccupied with counting them and figuring out where they are, and very distracted from actually teaching. So you could say that you know a simple solution to this problem could be to put a GPS monitoring device on the kit and let that be it. We tried out this approach with a prototype that gave off an alarm whenever a, chi whenever a child came too far away from the group. Uh, yeah, I heard, heard some people laughing. Uh, yeah. um, as maybe you can imagine, they didn't really like wearing it that very much. It felt quite restricted by it. <laughs> and they frequently came up to us and asked if they were allowed to take it off. So that was a big insight. And actually, later in the process, when we tried out a more playful, interactive prototype that put some of the res responsibility of figuring out where they were supposed to be on the children themselves, we had a lot of uh, better response to it. But more on that later. Um, we explored this issue or this relationship between trust and responsibility with Professor Jan Kampmann from a Danish university. And he told us that children naturally develop by pushing boundaries, by exploring them, and that they will only learn to take responsibility if they are surrounded by a trusting environment. One last insight was that these daycare teachers are busy, and they expressed a lot of concern at the idea of having to carry around a device in their hands that they would have to look at. So frankly, they feel like they have their hands full. So. For our design solution, we found that our product should allow children to explore these boundaries in a safe way, that children should be able to learn about responsibility through the acts of play, and that we wanted to work with how to create engagement from the children so that they would enjoy wearing the product, so that they would feel like it was their own and they didn't want to take it off. Um, Patrick's going to tell you about how we obtained the first two goals, and Monica is going to 
talk about how we worked with creating engagement through a participatory design process. All right, thank you, Nikolai. So this is our concept called Locali, which is a combination of the word location and the Danish word for play. Actually, Locali has a very unique approach to solving this mentioned uh, safety issue, as it's not just monitoring the kids, but it's actually teaching them to be safe through responsibility and play. So the concept is a wristband worn by children, children and teachers on daycare field trips. Uh, and when activated, all wearers get represented as small glowing dots on the bands. And this allows group members to easily find and play with each other on greater distances. So to define a safe zone boundary, a teacher simply draw it on a map in a smartphone app. And this is only required once and can be done from the safe home uh, at the daycare center. So when children get near this predefined boundary, their response starts to vibrate increasingly. And this tactile response is to remind the children not to get further away from the group. If a child chooses to ignore this vibration, a teacher gets a vibration alarm and the teacher's um, location or the child's location is shown as a red dot on the, on the teacher's band. So we work with this kind of graduate response, which uh, leaves room for the children's natural exploration of boundaries, and in the same way, teaches them about responsibility. As Nikolai mentioned, we didn't want this product, highly sophisticated product, to be just another interruptive element in the teacher's day, which is why we designed Localize with a low-resolution LED interface, which communicates the information in a very calm and direct way. And because of this, Local eye don't require very much attention, which then can be focused on what is most important, which of course is the kids. Yes, but even this functionality we show here does not make a product that the children would necessarily want to wear. So I'm going to show you how we worked with creating more engagement from the children through a participatory design process. So to develop playful functionalities, we created prototypes that could create colors and light and vibrations. We included groups of children in actively playing and creating ways to use these bands. So in this video, you see the children using the prototypes. And in contrast to the monitoring prototype that we tried earlier on, these more interactive functions created a lot more engagement from the children. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the functionalities that grew out of these playful sessions is that the colors change when two kids put their wristbands together. When we tried this out with the kids, they incorporated the color change into their play and used the different colors to signify roles in tech games. And because you have to be two children cooperating to change the colors, we found that it encouraged interaction and communication among the more shy kids. We also played these location-based games, such as treasure hunts and hide and seek, where we were using low-tech paper prototypes and compasses to simulate the functions of the wristbands. So these location-based games, they, may, they motivate the children to make use of larger areas. And this results in physical activity and in exploration of the nature. So on the wristband, you can see the other group members represented as small dots in a given direction. For the children, we found that it made more sense for each person to be represented as a small dot rather than grouping dots or showing an arrow. And this is because children of this age are very concrete in their understanding of objects and relations. So one person is one dot. Including children, it thus changed and shaped our product and created a, a product that the children would be engaged in, not only the adults. Thank you. To conclude, we have experienced that children are very innovative beings and they will make up many new uses for a very simple product. At first, we worried about how to include children in the creation process, but we found great, po great possibilities in engaging them through play. Um, during this process, we began to think of our product more and more as a platform for play, which can be utilized in many different ways by children and adults. This concept of group navigation, almost like a group sense, we believe can be used in many other situations, for example, in sports and mass gatherings, such as demonstrations and festivals. In this project, we learned the importance of regarding children as true stakeholders, 
calm technology and non-disruptive solutions, and the importance of working with stakeholders in a concrete context. These learnings enable us to make a tool toy for learning group navigation through play. The multiple functionalities of Localize include vibrational signals, color chains, and direction to other group members. Instead of Anya spending all her energy and being strict with the kids, she now can focus on what is most important for her, creating a joyful environment for living. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Mm. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, does one of our critics want to start us off? Excellent. Um, yeah. Okay. Excellent job. I loved that you shared the story of putting the wristband on the kids and how much they hated it. That is a true <laughs> part of design, and it wouldn't have been an honest presentation without that. Thank you. Um, I had a question. Two questions is one. Did you test this with parents, and what did parents who were not in location think about it, if you did test it with parents? And then the second question is, what happens um, in the failure mode? What if the technology doesn't work? What's the backup plan? And does that make Anya, is she satisfied with the backup plan? Yeah, uh, so the backup plan, we actually discussed this a lot with uh, one of the groups of also uh, teachers that we had involved. And they were saying, yes, but this should not be a sleeping pillow. Of course, you still need to be aware and to keep an eye on everything. And this is their responsibility, mainly. So it will be a help, but it's not a replacement for anything. And to the other question. And the what was the first question? The parents. What do the parents who are not there think of this? Do they like monitoring their children? Um, well, we spoke to some uh, parents in the beginning who did not really like the, the monitoration of in kindergartens, but that was mainly when you had cameras and were sort of very tracking them and all through the day. So this, uh, this approach of, I mean, you don't use the information, you, you can't sit lo remotely and look at them. It's mostly for like locally them knowing where they are in relation to each other. I think that softens up the whole monitoration uh, thing a bit. Yeah. Uh, hi, a couple questions. Um, yeah. First of all, uh, again, I agree totally. The, the the fact that you got the feedback from the kids and included that in the presentation is huge. Um, did you uh, two questions? One, did you did you what did you think of some of the various uh, previous prototypes of this, like WearNet or the, the the wristbands at Disney, things like that? Um, and two, um, in talking with Anya and the kids, um, did you find that there were any field trip activities? where the games that the bands afforded um, were disruptive of the activity versus were not? And what, uh, how did the, the activity that the bands afforded uh, change the field trip activities? Mm, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of questions. <laughs> that's two at once. Um, I think I can talk to, to the last one. Um, Actually, a, a, a large part of the pedagogy of uh, Danish uh, daycare centers is that we have less of a preschool uh, approach to it and more of an open play approach to it. So in most cases, when you go out and explore areas, it would be sort of open play where the children and the adults would um, sometimes play together and, and most of the time just the children playing by themselves. So in those kind of situations, I don't think it have, would have a disruptive effect. One thing that you could push the, pr the, the product further would be uh, while they're in transport. We also consider this quite a lot because that's a big part of the field trip is that you don't get into a bus in Denmark and drive somewhere. You go through public transportation and go. Um, so for that part of the trip, uh, I'm thinking that, that, yeah, how could we put it? That it could be, uh, we were speaking about that it could be maybe on, a, on an app or something. So you can customize for which kind of trip you're going on. If you're going into the S train or to the buses, you can sort of customize it to understanding when is all the children in the bus? Uh, is there somebody missing? Or when you're walking on a street and there is traffic out here, is there a special limit where you cannot go through the street? Um, but apart from the safety thing, it's also very much about uh, seeing each other and playing with this. 
which uh, making also the the awareness for the kids of where is the other where is the other group members where am I supposed to be in according to the other group members yeah. so just the fact that this this awareness is created hopefully also even though it's not uh, the boundary is not created uh, it still will help for the safety mm. but, but about the disruptive effect a big part of the the project has been about how to make some how to make a product that can exist in the periphery so that you don't so you're not interrupted by it unless something's wrong but you can use it actively if you feel it enriches the experience or you can use it somehow so that's I feel like that was what you were, were, were getting at, right? Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> first, thanks a lot. Um, it, it was really interesting. I First, I just want to make a comment that I, I really like the visual language you used in terms of presenting. It's interesting because you used a low fidelity of of the concept, which is appropriate because mm -hmm. it's your it preliminary in a real setting. So it's set in context. So congratulations. It shows good sense. It, it gives conviction to your abilities as designers. Right. So the second thing is, um, I, Denmark has this ter terrific tradition in participatory design. You invented it and, as a country, <laughs> and and, uh, and and I I like how you practice it. But I have a really interesting a question for me that, that I'm fascinated by. When did you engage the professor to talk about this notion about, let's say, the epistemology, the the, the how children learn in the boundaries and that? When did that happen in the in your design process? I think that was about halfway in. Yeah. Um, we had, of course, done a lot of research about uh, the pedagogy or the, uh, mm -hmm. like the, uh, the, the theory, but we wanted him to be a, an active partner in, in talking about the product. So about halfway in. Because I think it, it, I, 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 this is more a comment than a question, for that, because it, uh -huh. it's really interesting. Because a lot of people who have not engaged deeply in participatory design assume it's just you get the clients to d do the design, as in fact, <laughs> here there's clear conceptual leadership that mm. can only come from a design professional mm. and but then you work with that and, and, and couple it and and, and how you uh, have managed it and, and is really really well so congratulations it's uh, it's a very very well thought out project thank you thank you I can I we're back to that just, or? I'm sorry, I okay. think we've oh, run oh, out of time, sorry. so you guys will have to continue this conversation over Later. lunch, but thank <laughs> yeah. you very much. <laughs> thank you again.